Hi, Mike Aben here with another KSP tutorial. In my last Let's Do the Math video, I looked at the KSP Curb Net Communication System, how to calculate antenna ranges, signal strength, and transmission bonuses. But what I didn't show you was how to build a reliable satellite network so that you can communicate efficiently no matter where you are located. In particular, how to avoid the communication blackouts caused by a celestial body blocking your line of sight with Kerbin. To do this, you need a communication satellite network. This is most easily accomplished by placing three equally spaced relay satellites in identical circular orbits. These three satellites will be in constant communication with each other. In addition, any other vessel within range will always be able to connect to at least one relay. Thanks to the abundant ground stations scattered about Kerbin's surface, communicating anywhere in Kerbin's orbit is not a problem, provided you have a strong enough antenna. There is no need for further relays. However, around any other body, a relay network is necessary if you want communication 100% of the time. The technique I'm going to show you will work anywhere, but we've got to start somewhere and the logical first target is the moon. The first thing we need to decide is the radius of the orbit for our relay satellites. If you're too close, you can end up with satellites that can't talk to each other. But otherwise, almost any distance within the sphere of influence of the moon will do. I chose a radius of 1,254.85 kilometers. Why? Because that makes the length of time to complete one orbit, also known as the orbit's period, exactly two Kerbin days or 12 hours. You'll see in a moment why it's nice to have a period that is easy to remember. If you want to learn how to calculate orbit, orbital periods yourself, you can check the accompanying Let's Do the Math video. The plan is to drop all three satellites from a single transfer vehicle. For this, we need a phasing orbit with an apoapsis of 1,254.85 kilometers and a periapsis that gives us a period that is exactly two-thirds of 12 hours, which is eight hours. The periapsis that gives us this period is 565.65 kilometers. Again, check out the Let's Do the Math video to learn how to do this yourself. Later in the video, you'll see why a network of three satellites needs a phasing orbit with a period that is two-thirds the final orbit. Each satellite will be dropped at apoapsis and then circularized into its final orbit. This final circularization requires only 36 meters per second of delta V, which means we can build these satellites small. So, Let's meet our relay satellite. As you can see, this is an extraordinarily simple satellite. In fact, it's made up of only five different parts. For the main core here, we have the Probodobodyne Hex S2, which basically does anything you want a pro body to do. The antenna is this HG5 high gain antenna, which is the relay antenna you want to use whenever you're in the Kerbin system. It's the smallest of the relay antennas. Powering the thing, let's uh, retract the antenna. Okay, providing electricity, we have 12 of these just Oxstat solar panels. Simple, the first ones you unlock, but more than efficient for what we want to do. Powering the whole thing, or sorry, giving uh, for thrust, propellant, we have monoprop. And in fact, I put on the smallest monoprop container that I can, and you can see I've also reduced the amount of monoprop I can down to the smallest amount that I can. Uh, providing the actual engines here, I've just used these three of these linear thrusters uh, put inside here. So, very simple craft. And what we're going to do is we're going to put three of these into our launch vehicle. Now, in order to do that, we need to put this into a sub-assembly. So, we're going to need to add in another part. I plan to eventually connect this with a decoupler. So, the decoupler will sit, actually, this thing will probably be upside down in there. The coupler will sit down here. There we go. And so now what I want to do is I want to make this the coupler the root part. So I'm going to click on the reroute tool. We're going to click the probe body and then the part we want now to be the root part. So now when I click that, that's the root part. But that means when I click this, that's now free. Now I want to make a sub-assembly so I need to go into the advanced mode. Click on sub-assemblies, drop this into here. This is my 
Moon Comsat. And save. All right, now let's bring out... I know we don't need to save that. Let's bring up our vehicle here that's going to transport these guys. Okay, this is it here. Um, all together, what do we got? We got a booster down here at the bottom. That's going to be the first stage. That's going to be able to get this into orbit. Then we have here, this is going to be our transfer vehicle. This is going to get us into our lunar orbit, into our phasing orbit. It's going to drop three satellites. And then uh, it's going to actually still has enough fuel to be able to deorbit itself once it's all done. Back. Okay. And if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, calculating delta Vs and setting up a delta V budget so that you know your rocket will do the job that you need it to do, don't forget to check my uh, Delta V budget video. Anyway, what we need to do is get out our sub-assemblies again. There it is. Take this. This is my moon guy. And uh, we need to flip them around the other way. And we need to decouple. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this. Get us a decoupler. There it is. Put that there. Put that there. Next, what we want to do is stack three of these on here. So we're going to click on the fairing. We're going to show us a truss structure and we're going to enable the interstage nodes. So turn those on. So this gives us further nodes here that we can attach to. Now you got to be a little careful. It takes a bit of playing, or it took me a bit of playing around to get used to this. I'll show you what I mean. There's actually two nodes here at each spot. See that? So if I click on the lower one, this decoupler is now below this platform here. And if I actually decouple it, it will simply decouple. Like if I take a satellite now, take one of these and put that there, this actually won't work. This will decouple and then this guy will be stuck in there. So what I need to do is make sure that this is actually on the upper node. So it's above that platform. Now this can stick onto not the platform, but onto that. You can see it can get a little bit goofy. So what you might need to do is take away those interstage nodes. Now the only thing it has to connect to is the coupler the way I want. There we go. Now we're going to re-enable the interstage nodes. Right there. Grab another one of these. There it is. And one more satellite on top. Perfect. There we go. All we got to do now is build the fairing. this over a few degrees. That there. Whoops. Come back. Okay, lock you onto the prograde vector. And from here on in it's fine. Uh, you've seen me do lots of launches before, so why don't we cut up to our final circularization. Alrighty, that ought to do it. Let's put this on to the normal vector. We'll raise our little communitron here. Come on, there you are. Provide our communication once we get out towards the moon. And we'll set up our moon encounter. Now you've also seen me do trips to the moon and trips to Minmus before, though I will admit this is going to be a little bit extra I gotta think about because I am shooting for a specific orbit. Get this up to about 855. I always find works well. Kinda used to going to the moon a lot. <laughs> 850. Okay. Now again, remember that we want to have periapsis of our resulting orbit being 565. Let's focus on the moon here. 565.65 kilometers. So, uh, yeah, I think what we'll just do is do little adjustments here to see if we can get this 565. Oops, much. Close enough for now. Okay. 
fine-tune that, make it perfect a little bit later. All right, so let's time warp ourselves to the burn. We'll just slow down just a little bit. Cut it. Okay. Select that. And on prograde, you don't need this anymore. And again, I'm just gonna burn prograde here until I get to that 565.65. really close and to tune it in just a little bit more we're going to turn this thrust right down back oh look at that okay nice all right put it back on the normal vector so that these little solar panels here can catch some rays but otherwise time to get ourselves out to the moon there we go, okay, so let's make this entirely perfect here. I want 565.65, so I need to push this out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is put this on the radially out vector. That's getting me to burn that direction there. Again, our thrust is really low, so. Oh, overcooked a little bit, not a problem, radially in. Ah, darn close enough. Okay, let's time warp to here and establish our phasing orbit. Got that. Okay, 12, 1254.85. And turn down the thrust. Dial this in nice and close. Oops, I put up the nab. That's close enough. I think so. Yeah. All right. There we go. So there we have our phasing orbit. Again, this orbit has a period of eight hours. So next step is to start dropping satellites. So we're gonna time warp up towards our apoapsis. Warp to here. Get ourselves about five minutes away, I should think. Pretty good. All right, here we are towards Apoapsis. It is time to drop our first satellite. Actually, I'm just I'm not gonna use staging. I'm just gonna do it this way because I'm paranoid. So aim the camera right there and we will decouple that node. There goes that satellite. Okay, let's switch to the other. Uh, we will extend this antenna, get it all set, put you on prograde so this thing is all ready to go. This thing actually has quite a lot of delta V, well over 200 meters per second in delta V. In fact, it's more than six times what is required. So we should have no trouble getting this where we want it to be. So just time warp ourselves a little closer. And in order to do the thrust here, because this is uh, on uh, monoprop thrusters, they're actually RCS thrusters, I need to put on the RCS and press H rather than shift. Notice I just got lucky here. I almost didn't have a communication link. I should have been paying more attention. It just sort of popped in there. 
Let's start. Now, if uh, I actually didn't have a communication link, it wouldn't be a big deal. I'd just ride this around and keep riding it around until I did get my communication link. Okay, I'm tapping the H key. I'm getting that periapsis out to 254.85. Whoops, starting to push my periapsis, apoapsis a little too far away from me, so I'll time more closer. I want to get this as close to circular as I can. Okay, again, tapping the H key, 1254. Whoops, went too far, not a problem. We have lots and lots of delta V. Put it on retrograde, put the RCS back on. Okay, I can see this is too twitchy. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna turn down the thrust on these guys really low, there we go. Back, put these back here. Time warp again, a little closer. And I'm gonna need to burn prograde. Prograde. Or, okay. That is pretty nice there. Now, I want this period here to be exactly two days. And although KSP doesn't give you the period, you can get mods like Kerbal Engineer to give you the period, you actually can tell pretty good. If you take a look at your time to ap or periapsis, the one that's furthest here, one hour and four minutes, and you can see here I'm about four and a half minutes from my apoapsis. If I subtract those two numbers, uh, that gives you exactly one half the period. So you can see the Subtracting these two, I'm just a little over one day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just push it retrograde again. Whoops. Oh, I didn't turn off the RCS. That was a problem. Okay. Uh, did I mess this up even further? Yes, I did. Okay, that's not a problem. Actually, it just gives me an opportunity to talk about something else. This is too big. The apoapsis and my periapsis is too small. A good way to adjust that, to pull this up, while uh, push, pull this down while at the same time pushing this up is to use the radial part of your burn. And in this case, actually, because I want to pull this this way, I actually want to use radially in. So that's this one. Put on the RCS. Give it a little puff. Okay, that's 24.8. It's a little bit... Whoa. I should have left well enough alone. Okay, let's see what we got. 24 minutes here, one day and 24 minutes here. Subtract, that's one day. This is a period of two hours. Good enough, all right. Thing is, you can take your time. There's not a rush with it. You can leave it there, but this guy is now in the spot where I want it to be. So now it's time to switch back to my other main ship here, my main vessel. Switch to you. Okay, and now we gotta ride this around back to Apoapsis, and this will get you an opportunity, I'll center this on the moon so you can really see it, how this is going to work. Remember, this big orbit here has a period of 12 hours. This guy has a period of eight hours. So when it comes back to here, it's going to be, well, tw uh, 12 minus eight, that's four hours ahead. And four hours ahead is one third of an orbit. So it will be one, when this guy gets back to here, it'll be one third of a orbit ahead of this guy. It's coming around. And one third of an orbit separation between these two is exactly what we want. All right. Again, we'll get to a few minutes ahead of it. And then it's just rinse and repeat. 485.8. I think I think we're gonna go with that. Okay. And again, one more ride around. There's our transfer vehicle falling around, and it should fall exactly halfway between the two satellites we've already placed up here. Look at that.
This is most definitely the easiest way to do it. However, knowing how these phasing orbits work allows you, you know, if, if for whatever reason you can't do all three at a time, oh, For whatever reason, you can't do three at a time like I'm doing here. You can only do one at a time. You still use the whole idea of phasing orbits. There, get you out of the way. To uh, set up and get the satellites the way you want them to be. I like this. This looks pretty good to me. That's off. That is on the normal vector. So, our last thing we need to do oops, is get rid of our transfer vehicle. We gotta clean up our sky a little bit, make this look nice. So, this thing's done a very good job. And now it's gonna go through the final indignity of deorbiting itself. So, that's just, of course, burning retrograde until our periapsis. runs into the moon. Let's center this on the moon. Let's turn on, let's see, all our connections. There we go. Ah, now you can see everything that's going on here. So we'll ride this. Here it comes, this is our transfer vehicle coming down into its final. You can see, just to show you how the relay is working, all three of these are talking with each other and this guy here is talking with this one, its nearest competitor. It will always be able to contact one of the relays and always at least two of these relays will be in contact with the ground station on Kerbin. Let's just get this down. Goodbye. And now you can take a look at our beautiful communication network around the moon nice pretty equilateral triangle and of course you can do this and set this same sort of thing up around any celestial body that you like so with that done I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you again for the next one